So you applied to that job or that internship and you finally got called in for an in-person interview. So you've been preparing for a few days, you know, you had a whole list of questions that they might ask you. You read it over and over again with your friends or in the mirror. In the end, we all know that interviews are pretty scary and like nerve-wracking. So they finally call you in, you know, you sit down on the table and then you introduce yourself to the whole panel of interviewers. At the start, really you can sort of tell where the interview might be heading towards. And it really starts off with the first question. So if you can answer the first question correctly and confidently, then it sort of builds your momentum and your confidence on how you answer the next few questions. And so you'll know pretty much where the next few minutes of the interview will go if you're like one, still happy, still speaking calmly, maybe you're not stuttering, and honestly, if you have like a steady heart rate, so you're not like too nervous and it's not like obvious that you're nervous or sweating. And you'll know if you're going to be doing horribly. So at that point, basically after the first question, or if you can't even answer the first question, you might be stuttering a lot. Definitely you'll be nervous, so your heart rate is going to be going up like crazy. You're going to be sweating a lot. And honestly, it'd be pretty obvious that you're uncomfortable. And so at that point, you can just keep going forward and hope that the next few questions are easier to answer. Or you can sort of just give up and just realize that you know, I can't progress any further. Like, there's nothing really that I can do. I can't really persuade them enough. So I might as well just like not care. So you become more loose, you become more comfortable, and you just sort of just say whatever you want. So at that point, you basically pass the point of no return, but you want to end it with a bang. You know, you want to be memorable. And this could actually sort of separate you from the rest. Honestly, you don't have much to lose. So what you can do, and at least what I've done in the past few interviews that I've had before I got my job, what you do is you turn it against them. So at the end of the interview, they always ask you, do you have any questions for us? So this is where you shine. This is where you put them on a the spotlight. And this is where you put pressure on them because they put a lot of pressure on you. So here's what I ask when they ask that question. You know, do you have any questions for us? This puts pressure on them and it really puts them back down to earth because as of right now, they're interviewing you. It feels like they have all the power in the world because you're the one who wants to get hired. So they're the ones who are up there while you're like down here. So once they ask that question, now the tables have turned. Now you're up here and you want to put them on the spotlight. You want to put pressure on them. You want to make them feel how you felt. At the end of the day, if you feel like you're going to fail an interview, just ask really good questions. And so I'm going to give you three examples of the best questions that I want to ask them. So the first question that I'd like to ask them is, what would be the most challenging thing that someone in this position would have to learn within the next 30 days? So this question makes them realize that you're still new. Like you're applying to this job knowing that you're going to be learning a lot on the way. Realistically, you'll be learning as you go, but this just means that they can see that you're thinking ahead. Like you're preparing to jump right into this position, but you know that there's going to be some obstacles in the way. And you've already calculated the fact that you will mess up or that you will have to struggle a lot within the next 30 days. And you know it's going to be difficult, but you're ready for it. And so they can see that you're planning for something. And so their answer pretty much just gives you a heads up as to what you can expect to learn and undergo and, you know, endure in the next 30 days of getting hired. And hopefully their answer is honest to you. So the next question is, do you consider yourself coachable? And if so, what recent experience or event have you gone through that made you learn something new? So this question honestly puts them back down to earth. So you, for example, you know that you're coachable and willing to learn because, you know, you're applying for the job and you know that you've messed up before. But this question will prove whether or not the interviewers, who are most likely your boss or your managers, it tells them or shows to you whether or not they're honest. So hopefully they answer, yes, I am coachable, and they give you like a recent event. But if they're not going to say that they are coachable, then obviously you have someone who's like way up there, you know, way high in the head, someone in a pedestal, someone that you can't really relate to. So you definitely don't want to be working with someone who isn't relatable, who doesn't admit their mistakes or, you know, says that I am not willing to learn anything new because I'm perfect or the fact that things have always been this way so we're not willing to change or adjust to whatever new situation happens. You always want someone who's innovative or understandable or coachable or someone who can teach you when they mess up. And along with that, they should tell you, like, how recent the event was. So if it was, like, 10 years ago, we changed this you know, process, then that's fine and all, but 10 years is a pretty long time. So you want an event that's like pretty new, pretty recent. That way you can also gauge whether or not they're still coachable at their age. And lastly, this one could be a bit more personal, but it is, what have you learned during your working experience or your working career that you actually apply to in your daily personal life? So this question shows that you understand that there's a 
work-life balance. So not everything is all about work, even though yeah, you are applying for like a job. This question also shows that they are willing to learn and also build like a productive habit that they found during work and incorporate that into their personal daily life. So these questions are like pretty realistic, you know, down to earth, relatable and like personable questions that is not so much related to like the company, but more of a person, human to human interaction. So I like these questions because they really show engage whether or not you're compatible with whoever you're you're working with especially if these interviewers are your boss that you'll be reporting to every single day so if you can't get along with them you know based off these questions then maybe they're not a good fit or maybe the company isn't for you so whenever i ask these questions like i get more relaxed because i know for well, once that i don't have anything else to lose because i've already bombed the interview questions i just want to see how it is you know on their end can they answer my questions are they also fast on their toes or are they just going to give like a very generic long, boring speech about whatever. And if they do that, you can tell they're not really interested in you. And if they're not interested in you, then, you know, just good riddance to them because they're not really worth working for. So yeah, just ask really good questions, you know, make it more personable. The more personable, the better it is really because it scares them. It really, again, it shocks them because you're thinking way ahead and, you know, past the point of just working there, but like being an actual human being. So yeah, if you don't get the job, you know, we've all been there. It's fine if you don't, just, Try again next time. And who knows, maybe the fact that you ask these questions could change their decisions. They don't want like a robot just to say, I know everything about the company. There's more to work here than just memorizing the facts about company A. And I learned to do this after applying to like hundreds of jobs and getting rejected multiple times. At that point, you know, you sort of build like thicker skin from failure. So you just don't even care at that point. And so because I didn't care anymore, I just asked the way, I just asked all these to me difficult and personable questions that shock the interviewer. A lot of things I hope that my questions actually left like a more memorable like note on them. The fact that some interviewee, a candidate, asked these questions. Like he has the audacity and the courage to actually ask these questions, you know, good for him. So hopefully I made like an impact and a memorable experience as well. Alright, that's all I have. Goodbye.